Hello and welcome to our instructional series of videos. In this installment, we're going to show you how to replace the battery in an early 2020 13-inch MacBook Air. This installation does have the potential for damaging your MacBook if you're not careful, so be sure to both read all the information included with your kit and watch this video in its entirety before proceeding. We've gathered our materials and are working on a soft static-free work surface. We're now ready to begin. Before we go opening up the MacBook Pro, we first want to temporarily disable the auto boot function. We'll re-enable it later when we're done. To do this, launch terminal and enter sudo nvram auto boot equals percent zero zero. Then hit return. You'll be asked for your password. Go ahead and type that in. Note that your cursor won't move as you type in the password. Once you've entered that command, you can now shut the MacBook Pro down and close it. The first thing we'll need to do is remove the bottom cover. There are 10 total pentalobe screws that we'll need to remove. Start with the two center ones along the hinge edge, as they're the longest. Then, remove the two corner screws on the hinge edge, as they're slightly shorter than the ones you just removed. Finally, you can remove the remaining six screws, which are shorter still and all the same size. You can then use the suction cup to lift the bottom cover up and off. The next thing to do is to disconnect the battery cable. To do this, lift up on the tape covering the connection, then use your nylon tool to push the connector horizontally out of its socket. After that, we'll want to disconnect the trackpad. First, remove the two Torx T3 screws and metal plate holding the trackpad connector in place. You should then be able to lift straight up on the connector to detach it. Then carefully peel the cable away from the battery. We'll need to remove the speakers as well. Start by removing the single Torx T3 screw that holds each one in. Then, disconnect the speaker cables by lifting their connectors straight up and out of the sockets. The last thing we need to do is remove the adhesive strips near the bottom of the speaker assemblies. To remove them, simply peel back the exposed tab then pull straight back until all the adhesive pops free. Then do the same on the other side. If the tab or the adhesive snaps, you can just grab what's left and continue pulling. With only the magnets holding them in place, the speaker assemblies should now lift free of the chassis. The battery is held in place with adhesive strips similar to the ones holding the speaker assemblies in place, with three on each side. 
simply lift the tabs from the chassis and use them to detach the adhesive as you did before. The last thing we need to do is remove these two Torx T3 screws holding the battery frame to the chassis. The battery should now be able to lift up and out of the computer. To install the battery, we'll first need to place the new adhesive strips using the sheet of shorter ones provided in your kit. We'll be placing six strips, three on each side, on the raised areas in the chassis. Peel each strip from the sheet and place it so the black tab hangs over the end of the raised area the strip is on. You can then remove the red backing from the adhesive strips. You can now set the battery into place, taking care that the holes in the edge tabs line up with the corresponding holes in the chassis. You can then secure the frame with the two Torx T3 screws. Next, we'll use the longer adhesive strips for the speaker assemblies. Place a strip on each side, along the center of the gap between the battery cells and edge of the chassis, and back far enough that the black tab sits outside the indentation. Then, peel off the red backing. Set each speaker into place, making sure the notch in the assembly goes around the raised post in the chassis. Then, secure each assembly with its Torx T3 screw. Finally, push the speaker connectors back into their sockets. To reattach the trackpad cable, fold the cable back over the center cell of the battery and press the connector back into its socket. Then, secure it with its metal plate and two Torx T3 screws. Next, slide the battery cable horizontally into its socket, 
and may take a little maneuvering to get into place. Then, place the adhesive tab back over the connection and we're ready to close up. Set the cover back into place, making sure it sits flush. The longest pentalobe screws go in the two center holes on the hinge edge. The next longest go in the corners on the hinge edge. Finally, replace the remaining six screws which are all the same size. Now that the battery's been installed, we need to calibrate the power system. First, plug in the USB-C charger and let the battery charge up to 100%. Once it's reached 100%, keep it charging for at least another two hours. However, you can use your computer during this time rather than leaving it off. After that, we'll need to discharge the battery. First, in the Energy Saver Preference pane, make sure all the sliders are set to the right and any power saving measures, like sleeping the hard drive, are turned off. Do this for both the power adapter and the battery settings. Once you've done that, disconnect the power cable and let the battery discharge completely until the computer shuts down. Continue using it even through the low battery warning. Don't do anything particularly heavy. Steady and even usage will result in better power system calibration. Leave it shut down for at least five hours to ensure the battery is completely drained. Then, fully charge the computer back up to 100% without unplugging. Once the battery is charged back up, the power management system is properly calibrated. You can now set your energy saver settings back to normal and use your computer as you normally would. All that's left to do is re-enable boot on open. To do this, launch terminal and enter sudo nvram autoboot equals percent zero three. Then hit return. You'll be asked for your password. Enter that and hit return. Boot on open is now reactivated and your MacBook Pro is ready to use.